Okay, okay so we'll start recording. Three, two, one. Hi! Hey, welcome to a new episode of Beards and Beards. Today, we have a really, really special guest. I'm really excited about having Deira Foodman showing us a bit of her life and knowing her a little bit more. You probably have heard about CCI by 30. So let's expand there. And with us, Todd, how is it going on your side? Hey, G, uh, living the dream over here, buddy. Uh, Diera, good to have you on. I appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much. Uh, so before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, as G said, you are the creator of CCIE by 30, and I hope I'm saying that right. Please correct me if <laughs> I'm not. Uh, CCIE by 30 is a website that is for what? It is to track my certification journey with Cisco certs all the way up to my CCIE and beyond. I'm not going to shut it down once I get my CCIE, but yeah. <laughs> sure. Cool. Um, so everyone has various kind of, uh, shall we say, motivations for choosing their career. You know, some people are inspired by, you know, a certain mentor. Some people, uh, there are certain topics that they're really passionate about. Some are some people are motivated by notoriety or fame or, or, you know, the earning potential in a career. So what inspired you to take the career path that you chose? So for me, I've always loved taking things apart, figuring out how they work, breaking things, fixing them, <laughs> figuring out why stuff doesn't work. Um, and, you know, when I got exposure to my first computer, I'm like, like, how does this work? What makes it, you know? function. Um, and that kind of started my love for technology. From then on, I was always super tech savvy, always wanted to, if, if we couldn't purchase the latest tech, read about the latest tech. Um, sure. um, I was super into science, again, problem solving. And um, from there, I attended high school, a vocational high school, um, and learned that there are people who make the internet work. And I'm like, I didn't know that was a thing. I want to learn how to do that. <laughs> so I signed up for that uh, in my sophomore year. And, and that program was the Cisco Networking Academy for those listening um, and just fell in love. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, I, I see so many times that innate like passion for fixing or bro fixing broken things and that feeling of accomplishment that, you know, you could figure out the internals of something uh, so, so much of that in this industry to me is, is the drive that, that keeps people going, that, that gets you interested in learning how to solve the next problem, so on and so forth. So I, I definitely feel that same, uh, it, that same passion and that same interest that, that you mentioned. Yeah, no, I want to dig a little bit in Deira's life. I would like to know mm -hmm. how it looks a, little, a day to day. How's a normal day in your life? Normal uh, pre-COVID. <laughs> so uh, I work at a, we're kind of an MSP for like a digital marketing agency um, in the heart of Baltimore. So pretty short commute, about 10 minutes. I get there, get to the office, you know, I'm checking my emails. Um, I'm out of a lot of the day-to-day -day operational break fix stuff for now. So I, I'm pretty much focusing on projects and then of course if there's a fire then all hands on deck but you know getting in responding to emails um and then from there you know checking our monitoring systems making sure everything looks good and then from there i'm jumping into whatever projects i'm working on meeting with teams um gathering requirements or just doing just general research for you know a problem that we may have that's existing or you know planning for future growth so and you still have time to get on the CCIE certification track, to blog about that, to show up as a, one of the influencers out there in social media. We see a lot of activity from your side on Twitter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's like 24 hours a day. It's very <laughs> short for all what you do. Huh? Yeah, I try to take breaks in between working and studying, and then I'll usually get on Twitter um, and just, or on my lunch break, get on Twitter and just, you know, reach out to people, see what's going on. 
write about what I'm experiencing if I'm having a problem. Yeah. And just so you're not it. virtual right now. You're, you've been in the office. So we have been this? virtual. Um, we just went back. We're doing a phase approach and I volunteered for phase one just because I don't have like a traditional office space at home. So I was just kind of using my dining room table. <laughs> yeah, um, that can so be tricky. I'm in yeah. kind of like a hybrid fashion now where I go in like two days out the week and then I'm remote the rest of the time. Uh, we're seeing a new focus on like STEM-based education programs. Mm -hmm. uh, in my state where I live, Georgia, uh, there's a program for schools to become program certified. And from, from what I'm seeing, this is leading to a lot of young boys and girls to get to joining these programs to study various STEM-related topics and, and kickstart their kind of career, right? Have you seen anything similar in your state of Maryland? or across the country? And, and, and obviously, uh, how do you feel about those kind of programs? So in Baltimore City, which is the school district I um, graduated from in high school, we have a, a group of, I think it's about 12 high schools now that are what they call career and technology education centers. So these do a little bit of everything from um, tech careers to like cosmetology, culinary arts, child care, anything you can get certified in and kind of come out of high school with an entry level position. Um, and coming from a city that, you know, has a large um, urban population and, and low income population, I think it's great. Because I think a lot of times yeah. the disconnect is, you know, finish high school, go to college. Um, right. But then it's not a lot of, okay, well, how am I going to pay for you know, my life while I'm in college or, you know, even paying for school itself. Am I going to have to go into debt? Right. And these programs right. give you an opportunity to come, to come out of school with a um, valuable skill that you can make money off of either full-time or part-time. I know for me, I took a gap year and just worked, um, but either full-time or part-time and be able to finance, you know, live a little bit better or pay for college or take a gap year and kind of figure out what you want to do. So I'm a huge fan of, of these programs. And I think it's great that um, the education system is finally catching up. Cause I think for a lot of times, you know, just going to college doesn't really work for some people. Some people exactly. like hands-on getting their hands dirty, getting in there and with tech being the future. And I think for a while, IT was kind of looked at like, oh, you're just, you fix computers, whatever. But now technology is so integrated into every single industry. Like you got FinTech, you got the medical industry is now um, doing right. a big overhaul to move to these tech related programs. So regardless of what industry you're going to be in, you're always going to be tech adjacent. So having that understanding will take you further, no matter what industry you're going into. Data comes from networks. Usually high tech is a world where women are a minority. Um, but however, we got many great women there like Fish, Dennis Donahue, yourself. But what do you think needs to happen to engage more women in this world of high tech? What really makes to do that shift? I think one, it needs to be advertised to girls early. Um, I think it's already, you know, kind of advertised to guys is like, oh, yeah, this is tech. It's computers, you break stuff, you fix it. And I think it really needs to be, you know, more advertisement towards girls for one to get them into the programs. And then once you have them in these programs, create an ecosystem that allows them to thrive, listen to their concerns, um, don't just disregard it as, you know, interpersonal conflict, like really for leadership, really. And I've been fortunate enough to have managers who have, you know, listened to my concerns and and helped me, you know, either giving me advice to navigate it or stepped in. Um, so I think advertising it to get them into the program, providing the ecosystem to support them and grow. And then once they're into the workforce, having leadership that really has their back and is willing to mentor or step in if necessary. Deara Footman, I wanna thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you uh, have provided some awesome insight to us uh, regarding your certification path, your your inspiration and, and the program that you've worked on. So, uh, awesome inspiration for us and for many others out there. So we thank you so much for joining us and best of luck to you in the future. Thanks for having me.